bats are such intelligent animals. They're very curious about their environment and they're gentle, they're very social and communicative and they're just fascinating animals. The Idaho Department of Fish and Game is interested in bats and rabies because the department is the designated authority for wildlife in the state of Idaho and bats are part of that. So we want to raise awareness in the state of Idaho for people not only in the outdoors but in their homes to be aware that bats are part of the landscape. 6.8 and if we come into contact with them, understand what a rabies exposure is and when they need to just leave bats alone or how they need to respond, then we will have fewer bats having to be euthanized and tested for rabies when it's not necessary. Because they have some major threats right now from white nose syndrome and wind energy across the country and it's reduced their populations and they don't recover quickly. So we have to look at other things that we can do for bat conservation to protect our bats and keep people safe. The Idaho Department of Fish and Game Wildlife Health Lab addresses wildlife diseases. The rabies virus variant that we have in the state is bats. And so exposure to rabies is defined as a break in the skin, either through a bite or a scratch, or if I have an open wound on my hand and the bat licks my hand, there's potentially a way for the virus to get past my skin barrier. Or if I'm sleeping or I have an infant that's sleeping and I find a bat in the room, I don't necessarily know what happened. And that's, that's what constitutes exposure. In healthy bat populations, the, the actual numbers of animals that are affected by rabies is very, very low. But most people don't encounter bats in natural environments. Where they do encounter bats is in their homes, in their cabins, on their back patios. And most of those animals are either potentially doing normal things in abnormal places or potentially they're sick. One of the reasons they could be sick would be rabies. And if the bat is showing neurological signs or if there's an obvious exposure, then we have to euthanize this bat and get it tested for rabies. But what we're trying to do is make people aware that not all bats that are found in abnormal situations are rabid. And we're trying to draw that distinction. And so if you're going to handle bats, be either vaccinated or have your personal protection equipment to minimize the risk so we don't have to endanger the bat's life. Because we'll sacrifice the bat for human health. Some of those animals come here to the Wildlife Health Laboratory where we would either conduct a necropsy or at least obtain the specimens that we need to to send on to the Idaho Bureau of Laboratories to do the rabies testing. So when an animal comes to the State Public Health Laboratory for testing, the brain is examined. And if we have a positive test result, then that person who submitted the animal is alerted to the test results right away. They're encouraged to seek medical treatment immediately with their healthcare provider because now you have an actual rabies exposure and rabies is almost 100% fatal. So people really need to get the shots to prevent this deadly disease. And thankfully now there's only one or two human rabies cases across the country every year. Now it's a very small percentage of bats that have rabies, but they are the number one species that uh, we encounter with rabies but bats are very beneficial to the environment. They play an important role in consuming a lot of insects that also cause disease in people, like eating mosquitoes that cause West Nile virus. So they play a really beneficial role in the environment. And if we minimize exposure to bats. Mom, there's a bat on the sidewalk. We are minimizing the number of bats that have to be euthanized okay, and tested. So it, it's important to understand that public health and conservation goals can work in harmony together in order to protect people, protect bats, and avoid rabies. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention 
serves as the National Rabies Surveillance Program. So all of our state partners annually submit uh, all of their rabies testing data to us to try to paint a picture of the status of rabies across the entire United States. Rabies is primarily transmitted by a bite. It's entirely fatal, but it's also entirely preventable. Luckily in the United States, we have a very robust health system that does provide ready access to vaccines. So if you receive it appropriately, you will not go on to develop disease. So One Health is a combination of our animals, people, and the environment in which we share. And it's the acknowledgement that there are diseases that animals have, there are diseases that people have, and there are conditions and even diseases that exist in the environment that can impact all of us. And so rabies is one of the prime examples of One Health in action. It's an important issue for both human health and animal health, right. wildlife and domestic. So One Health is the way to bring in experts from all of these different fields that can bring their own knowledge and skills and experience to try to come up with preventive health measures that can address the whole picture instead of just one piece of this puzzle. Wildlife are best left alone. If you see a sick or strange acting bat, it's most important that you immediately notify a health authority or animal control who will have the proper protective wear and probably a history of rabies vaccination to safely assess that bat and see if it can be rehabilitated or if it needs to be humanely euthanized due to its, its condition. And bat rehabilitators are kind of the front line of our public health system. They're an important group to make sure they are educated about not only the, the risks of rabies and bats, but also the necessity of reporting potential exposures to our health departments that can conduct a rabies risk assessment. Bat World Sanctuary is the only facility in the world that is dedicated to rehabilitation, rescue, and lifetime sanctuary for orphaned, ill, and injured native and non-native bats. And we have a really strong relationship with the Texas Department of State Health Services. We routinely report if we find a bat that we suspect is rabid. We report information that they need to follow up with citizens that may have been exposed. And when a bat is found on the ground, if the individual who finds it picks it up barehanded, bat is frightened, it bites, we as rehabilitators have no recourse except to euthanize the animal and send it for testing to determine whether or not it's rabbit. And most of the time they come back negative. And those are lives lost. On top of that, we're losing millions of bats to white nose syndrome. We're losing hundreds of thousands of bats per year to wind turbines. And then we're adding insult to injury by needlessly having to test bats for rabies because we didn't think. And it's a very simple matter to protect them and protect ourselves by not handling a bat barehanded and getting it to a qualified rehabilitator as quickly as possible. But it's important to remember this. It's not possible to get rabies because a bat flew by. It is not possible to be infected with rabies because you touched a bat that was on the ground with the toe of your shoe. Exposure to rabies means that Infected saliva or central nervous system fluid or tissues has been introduced into the body with direct contact to blood or mucous membranes from an animal that is actively shedding the virus in order to be at risk of contracting the disease. So the very best protection is for the person who finds the bat to not touch it barehanded and not try to care for it themselves, but get it to somebody immediately who can help. Be responsible, protect yourself, and protect them. It's that simple. <laughs>